Hi, welcome to the Wardenburg Family Farm with Don and Brenda. We're standing at the top of the stairs that lead down to our root cellar. It is the most beautiful root cellar, but I can't use it. We have two problems. Come and join us. We'll talk about the problems and how we solve it. So isn't this cool? This is a cool root cellar. I mean, when we first bought this house, I was so excited to have a root cellar. And we couldn't wait to clean it up and get it all ready to go and put the shelving in and get it perfect. And it looks so nice. But as I said in the last video, we don't do master plans. <laughs> and this time we probably should have. We yeah. should have planned ahead for a few things. We got the cart ahead of the horse. Very much so. <laughs> okay, the first problem is the root cellar here is not cold enough. We wanted it ideally but to be between 40 degrees and 50 degrees. And right now the temperature in here is 52 degrees. And that's probably about the lowest it's been. Yeah, because we're end of January. Now, up in the larder right now it's 55. And that's okay, that meets our new plan that we have. But this needs to be 10 degrees colder. Well, and when they first built this, it would have had ventilation. And you yeah. see that up there, it would have been a hole to the outside air and it would have got some ventilation. And that was the, the 1840 yeah, house. Yeah, this was the 1840 house and they built this out, but then they built the 1880 addition right over this and they covered up the vent. So above the ground level here, there's about three feet of soil above the arched roof and above that is a crawl space for the 1880 addition. So they covered over that so we don't have natural ventilation. So that's a problem. So the ethylene gas can't vent and we have no way to get colder air in here. The reason the temperature is a problem here is because we're below the frost line and the soils naturally here in the winter only get down to about 50 degrees. So there's no way to get it colder just by the cold coming through the stone. And we don't have natural ventilation. So we need a more modern um, ventilation system. All right, so we told you the number one problem in the root cellar is it's not cold enough. The number two problem is a little more complicated and more serious. We have a radon issue. Radon is a colorless, odorless, radioactive gas that is from natural decay from stone and from the soil. And we're in limestone territory. That's one that's infamous for that. And you saw the whole root cellar is made of limestone yeah. and has a dirt floor. And the radon gas is seven and a half times heavier than air so it tends to accumulate in the lower levels of the home. So we needed to monitor and find out what our radon problem really is. And it's common in most older houses in limestone areas, especially if they have a limestone basin, you're gonna have a radon problem. So the most typical way to monitor, you buy a kit from a lab, you set it out for three days to a week, and then you mail it back to the laboratory and they give you the results. But because we had such a problem here, an ongoing problem, we needed to buy a monitor. This is about a hundred dollar device that gives you instant feedback on what your radon levels are. And we wanted to check all over the house. We placed it in various areas for a couple days and checked the level everywhere to see where the biggest problems were. So we started here in the larder area and remembering that the PICO, the uh, action level from the government is at four PICO curies per liter so if you're over that, if you're over four, you should take action and do something to correct it. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, we have a level of 22 here in our larder. So we hired a remediation contractor. They come in, they will saw holes in the floor and put PVC pipe with fans so they can put a negative pressure under the slab and draw out any uh, radon that might be coming up through the soil to your home. Now that did provide some relief for uh, our larder, Harry. Which, and the rest of the house. Yes. So we have down to about 10 to 12 in our larder. It's still not good enough. But we don't spend that much time down here, so we're not that concerned. And we're not done. The mm -hmm. real problem, we need to find the source of the uh, radon, and that is coming from our root cellar. My pretty root cellar. So again, remembering the number of four, 
the measure in our root cellar is over 200. So it'd be very dangerous to spend a lot of time down in the root cellar. Yeah. So in summary for our remediation plan, we hired a contractor to cover 95% of the footprint of the farmhouse with ventilation to the outside. What it didn't cover though is the root cellar. Now we're encouraged though because there's a crawl space under part of the farmhouse and it has ventilation and it does not have a radon problem. So we're hoping that with the addition of ventilation in the root cellar that it will take care of the radon problem there as well. Okay, I've never done this before, so I did some reading, got a few ideas, so I decided to buy some 4-inch PVC pipe, uh, enough to go a one line in and one line out, and I bought a fan and, and trying to get a control system so that I can um, remove the heavy air that's at the bottom, which is the radon in it, push it outside and then let the ambient air from the outside come in through the other pipe, and it'll also flow in from under the door. Again, remembering that that radon gas is seven and a half times heavier. So I'm gonna have both of them terminate at the floor level. Okay, now we begin the construction part of the project. I'm working with four inch PVC pipe. It's schedule 20 pipe, which is the lightest pipe that they have. It's a little less expensive. Uh, the troubling part is I have to put this pipe outside of these stone walls. It's going to go all the way up and outside through the stone to the exterior. And then it needs to go all the way down through the basement down into the cold cellar. There will be two lines. One of them will be powered and one of them will be a natural flow return line. Um, I have a lot of work ahead of me because this has to be dug into the ground to go under the door and to be placed properly in the room. And I guess the most disappointing part is that these pipes are visible and it's such a cool looking root cellar. I'm going to have to do something creative to, to cover these pipes. I'm not sure what it is yet. I'm anxious to see what happens at the end. Uh, stick around to see where this goes. Okay, we're making progress on the project. First, I was going to put in the unpowered natural flow return line, which is a four inch PVC Schedule 20 pipe. I'm gonna dig it under the floor. So I do, have, I do have it dug in, it looks pretty good. It was gonna come out here around the corner and terminate right on this corner down low. So it will capture any radon gas. The problem is when I went digging, huge slab of limestone which I'm not going to be able to break up. So plan B is to terminate it right here on the other side of the door uh, post. And I think it'll be out of the way and it'll be low enough to get the radon, the radon gas. Next, I was going to dig the powered four inch line to go right up the center of the room and terminate up against the wall. The problem is that this slab is so big, a rock, I'm going to have to run it along this wall kind of under and above ground, but I think I can do it so the shelving unit will hide it. It won't look too bad. So we have a plan. Let's see how it goes. Okay, we're making progress on the root cellar today. Unfortunately, it feels like we're taking a few steps backwards because I had to tear out our beautiful shelving units. I'm digging up the floor. Uh, trying to avoid rocks. Every time I hit a rock with a shovel, I think, Oh, is this going to be another slab that's going to stop us dead in our tracks or is it going to be a small? So, so far I've gone about six feet and so far so good. I'm hopeful that I can run it all the way along the wall and part way in the back. And I know that I'm going to have to pull the shelf out from the wall a little bit because I'm not sure that I can put the whole thing below ground. So I got some four by four spacers. 
And that'll be good because give a little more ventilation behind it. But sometimes on a project like this, I just had a thought. You know, for $1,000, I could buy two refrigerators and not have any of this. But um, I know in the end, we're going to be happy with it. So I need to power through this part. And um, things usually come out good. I just have to think of that. And uh, we'll see where it goes. The pipes are in the ground. I covered them over. We're starting to reconstruct back to the way it was. The only difference is the shelf is a little further from the wall because that pipe runs along the back and it's only like three quarters or, you know, I didn't want this heavy shelf sitting on the pipe. Fortunately, it didn't hit any big stone so all the way and you can see, and this is just a temporary section right here. This will come out and it'll be even with the ground. Did that to keep dirt from going down in. I'll build a little box over it with a screen to keep other dirt and debris from going in. Now I just need to finish putting the shelf up. I'll pop a couple of these on here and we'll see how it works. Since I had to take all these down, boy am I glad I didn't build a large permanent unit and fasten it into the wall. Go on. And now with it against the brace in the back, it's really solid. So I'm happy with that. Now we just have to see if our ventilation system works. And that'll take a little bit of time to put together yet. Well, he's made a lot of progress. So it's still going to take a lot longer, so we're going to bring this video to a close and show you the rest in part two, which hopefully will be fairly soon. i got to tell you, though, I'm feeling a lot better about the outcome of this project. We now have a fan to go inside the four-inch pipe, and more important than that, we have a great control unit. Now, I don't know how it's all going to work together yet, so I can't wait to see how it comes out. Uh, the next phase is we have to break through this wall. A 180-year-old stone wall. And my Mason's assistant's going to help me with that. So we should Can't be wait. good. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you tune in for part two. It could be really fun. So hopefully you'll see us real soon. All right. Bye-bye.